Okie dokie. Right. Yeah. yeah, I'm good. So, question is, what am I doing <laughs> in general? <laughs> um, I am uh, starting, uh, well, I've, it's been a two year project. It's been kind of uh, through lull. <laughs> Russell's been with me the whole time. Yeah. So, yeah. he knows. But um, it's a uh, podcast, which is looking like it's going to be between seven and eight episodes, which um, covers the uh, disappearance and the eventual, I guess, uncovering of, of, of recovering of the body of, of Felicia Barnes. Mm -hmm. um, it spans the period from uh, slightly before when she went missing on December the 28th of 2010. And uh, it has a milestone, of course, when her, her body is recovered from the Conowingo Dam on April the 20th, 2011. Speak but it a also, bit, just a little bit. Yes, sir. When, when the body's recovered on April the 20th of 2011 in the Conowingo Dam, but then it continues to the um, the three trials that Michael Johnson was tried at afterwards, uh, the investigation as well. Um, <clears throat> but not only do I view the case as a case, um, a vexing case of a missing person, it's interesting because it, uh, from, from the perspective of a former prosecutor, it uh, involves the FBI, it involves Baltimore County, I'm sorry. And the state Baltimore, police. Baltimore City Police Department, State Police, Harford County Police Department. It's just not a typical thing for the, all those agencies to work together. And it, it involves you you folks as well. Well, know, obviously. one of the things that, that we I want to do, mm -hmm. and this is what I was talking to Jazz and the Angels about, is during that, that time, and you've seen it through all the links and all the stuff you look through. Yeah. So for four months, everybody went crazy trying to figure out what to do. And like you said, there's so many different jurisdictions involved. We went from here to North Carolina, to Baltimore, to North Carolina, to Harford County, and of course, Baltimore City <clears throat> doing what we can to, to, to help. Yeah. All right. But and in, in between all that, we have so many different moving parts that came with us during that time. So. The Guardian Angels got involved. Through that, we met with Guy Tom Borders and Peas and Air Pods back then to do a story and help. And we are still partnering today doing stuff. We have Natty Vargas, who now runs the San Antonio, Texas Guardian Angels on Missing Persons. She got involved because of Felicia Barnes. Uh, of course, we met the family of Russell Barnes do this, which was, you know, that thing. And then we have... You know, so most of the people that we met during this case, we are still involved with 10 years later, working with other families. So what I want to do now is put together a list of all the people who were involved back then, yeah. which this may help you as well. I did not know that this oh, yeah. one, oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah, so, so we, we worked with everybody during that time. So a lot of the people that we met during this time, we are still in contact with today and they are helping us with other families now we have a, a girl in monroe uh ricky blankenship and she met us and guy tom borders and peas in north carolina we did a missing persons seminar and then we went to union more and they all visited us there now she is running the garden angel chapter in monroe north carolina you know so all of us are tied in because of the felicia thing so this is why Huh. This is a big deal to, to us. So next month is the 10 year anniversary. So I want to put yeah. something together. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, this, I mean, 10 years is a big deal. Yeah. No, no, and I, 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 there's been so many moving pieces. And like I said, I, I met with the former deputy police commissioner this morning who was around during that case. And he remembers a lot of stuff that went on back then. Yeah. And I mean, and you know, we, we went through trials and tribulations of our own with the police, which was always good. We didn't step on their toes. We didn't get in their way. Yeah. And uh, which was good because it gave us the credibility. To this day, we still work with their missing persons thing when we they want us to do uh, missing persons or homicide. You know, yeah. so, we, so, so a lot of stuff that we do has actually took off because of this case. Huh. We have a national honk for the missing campaign every year and which is now global. So every day on the same day around the world, guardian angels go out and take a missing person locally at the same time and profile that person for harm. So when you go back and do your research, yeah. punch up punk for the missing. 
Yeah. And uh, can you pick that? Yes. Cool. All right, so punch that up, and you'll see. But all this stuff came out of the Felicia Barnes thing, and then since then, I mean, we've got tons of missing person stuff and people that we do now. So we have we have a whole unit just developed to missing persons now, thanks to this case. But say, did you, you didn't have one prior to this case? No. Huh? No, I mean, we did community patrols and community events and stuff like that, and I think Felicia Barnes was probably the first. Yeah. Missing person, we did, didn't it, Jess? Felicia Barnes was the first. I mean, after you know, we went through Felicia Barnes. I honestly didn't think we. I wasn't sure we'd ever do another missing person no. case. That was really hard for yes. us. We were ready to. Really I was. Hard. I was literally going to throw this, and I and I was talking about this to Harry, who was Felicia's uncle, mm -hmm. and I was telling him that we were literally. I was going to close this chapter down after Felicia Barnes was found. So for four months. I had angels going crazy, literally, yeah, yeah. running around day and night, you know, doing all kinds, they weren't even going to work, man, we trying working, to find, we weren't, eating, not, we weren't we doing weren't nothing, it was, it, it was, was that's crazy. all it was. Even when we were at work, we were still Yeah, it was, it was people. hell, and I remember the day Russell called and said, hey, they found her body, I called all the angels in, and we all met right here, and I got a couple, I got pictures, I brought, I meant to bring my laptop today, yeah. I left it home. I pulled up all the pictures. I got pictures of all of us here that day. And I remember thinking this, nobody said anything. Mm -hmm. Nobody yeah. spoke. And we just sat there looking at each other like, what the fuck? Right. You know, and I remember then Russell called and said, where are you guys? And I said, we're, we're at our headquarters. We're so sorry. And he said, Russell, and Russell told us, come on over. Yeah. And then we want you guys to come over. And I said, well, I was, you know, what are we going to do? He said, you're going to come and grieve with us. And all the angels went over to Russell's family, and we all sat there that night. Yes. And that kind of helped because I, don't, I think if it wasn't for us being with you guys, I'd have said, fuck it, I'd have quit. I'd have mm -hmm. said, I'm done. We're going to close this shit. I can't do this again. Mm -hmm. This was horrible, man. Mm -hmm. I lost angels. I mean, it was, I had angels who said we were doing too much, I had angels say we weren't doing enough. It was hell, man. Yeah. Yeah. I was fighting with the police department, fighting with private sector. Agencies, it was horrible. We were fighting with each other. <laughs> fighting with each other, it was yeah, horrible, it was, man. It was crazy. I'm not sure if you know this. Did, did Russell tell you that I was uh, one of the law clerk, the very first trial for this case? I was yeah, law, yeah. the law clerk on it. Yeah, he told me. So yeah, I mean, I, I, I wasn't involved in the investigation, but it was that was a year, I think. No, it was like ten months. I was on stri strictly on this case, mm -hmm. preparing it for trial, and it was a. Uh, it was, in, it was intense. It, it was. was. We it was did. Was we tough. had. We were so involved that the lady. The apartment complex where Felicia Barnes went missing mm -hmm. would not allow the police to keep coming over there unless one of the angels was there, mm -hmm. and it was it was because it was a mess. They they, they it was some kind of bullshit between them and all. But she trusted us, mm -hmm. yeah. and we're still friends with her today. I'm actually going to reach out to her and talk to her because I want to talk to everybody who went through this with us, mm -hmm. yeah, and put like a video thing together and 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 say, hey, look, you know, what do you think? This is almost ten years. You know, what are your thoughts? But I want to I want to reach out to to all of them. And it it was crazy. We did the searches. We, you know, yeah. we were we were the first ones to go through the building and and, and the well. Oh, oh, yes. And all dumpsters. Yes. the dumpsters. The dumpsters. We were everywhere. Right, so this yeah. <laughs> this is uh, I I know all these dates. I know all this stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. January twenty first, twenty eleven is the well house. That, mm. That's all. That's uh, Southwest Baltimore. That yep. would be right yep. off of um, uh, what is that road called? Uh, 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 it's uh, Edmondson Avenue. It tees with Edmondson Avenue. Uh, the we school's got, down the street. Anyway, yeah. it's, a, it's a well house. It's on. It's got yeah. the mansion there. Yeah. The yeah. apartment's back. You were there. You were part of that. The yeah, we were there. Yeah. The, the, yeah, and not only that, but the uh, the apartment complex where she lived was mm -hmm. not where she lived, but the where, where the brothers the, lived. Where uh, we call them fat boys. But, fat boys. but yeah, that's the yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when. Uh, the, the uh, office manager called us, remember? Mm -hmm. And right, said, right. look, you know, we're being threatened by these guys. And I took like six to eight angels down there, and that was the end of that. <laughs> that was it. Oh, I remember this this way. Right. So, so, yeah. Wait, what are you saying? So, all right, so who's th This is a lot. <laughs> yeah, it is. We, <laughs> who's threatening you? Who's was, threatening you at that point? Nobody. Oh, us. okay. Not us. Okay. They were, this was where, remember, this is yeah, where the, the, uh, yeah, the Johnson the family lived. lived. Yeah, that's where, so that's where, that's where Glenton Allen lived. Yeah, Glenton, yeah, yeah. Glenton Allen Johnson yeah. lived there at yeah. the apartment complex. And she was, was like, yeah, yeah she, was, she was terrified. She said they're waiting outside the car and all this shit. And, and we, we went down there and hung out and 
They that, still believe the body was over there uh, as a particular. And, well, they and brought they, a cadaver they, though. So they huh? brought a, the police bring a cadaver dog yeah. to that location. And the dog sniffs. Right. The dog yeah. when the dog sniffs that well, the dog sits. Right. They drain the well because of that. They don't find anything, but the dog did, and, and that dog's only sitting if it smells the cane flesh. Now, mm -hmm. did you know that during this time, I got a call from a lady from some state, it's in my record somewhere, who had cadaver dogs, and she said, we can come down and help you. These dogs are trained to find a body up to at least a year after it went missing. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, what do you need? She said, we need an apartment complex, we need road closures, we need a place to stay, and we need airfare for our dogs. Mm -hmm. and, but we, and our final thing is we need police permission. I said, okay. So I got everything she needed except the police permission. So that was when Nichols yeah. said, no, no, we don't need that, we're not doing that. So I wrote a letter to the police commissioner, Fred Bilfeld, and said, here, this is what we have, this is what we've been offered. Yeah. I said, if all things being equal, and you have no liability, what do you lose? You don't have to do anything. I even had, I had a highway people, closure people saying, we'll do it for you. Don't worry about it. We had everything. So Bill felt was going through something else. And I was at work one day and the detective Nichols called me like a month or so later. It was, it was a while after. He, and he's yelling and screaming at me. I said, who the hell do you think you're talking you're to? Talking to? You're talking about Nicholson. Nicholson. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. I said, who are you talking to? Yeah. And we got into it over the phone. <laughs> and I said, check your email. I said, that email was sent almost more than a month ago. I said, you're yelling and bitching over something over a month ago. I said, you should be ashamed, but you should have read that shit a month ago. Yeah. So Bill Feld gets involved. Yeah. Sets up a meeting with me in the police department. We go down. I go down and I'm thinking, okay, he's going to be pissed at me for something, you know? Yeah. And Bill Feld told him, Strider didn't do anything wrong. I should have known about this. If he asked for anything, you give it to him. That's yep. it. And that was the end of the meeting. You know when that was? <laughs> Or, or I, I got, I got, yeah, I'll, I'll send you the date okay. for the, uh, for that. I got all that shit in email. Okay. But yeah, man, but, but it shows how much hell, yeah, it, like I said, this, this was a pain in the ass. It really was. Oh, yeah. Definitely. I, yeah. Do, I, I do remember now a lot of things uh, you guys don't know, for you guys are going wrong. They did have a dog come out that day, uh, that, uh, for the Wild House? No, actually, before. Yeah, so there's also a second dog, or no, a first dog that came out. Came out a day or two before. St Maryland State apartment. Police, that was the apartment complex. It went yeah. two or three spots down from where the apartment is. It stopped. stopped right there. Yep. That, 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 that she did get in a car. And that's the that's the theory. What, that's, and she did, don't, that, what, no, she was put in the car. But she was put in the car. Right. Yeah. And the thing about it was that that if we could have got that lady to come down here with that team of dogs. She said that even if it's in a the car, they just shut off the road, they do a grid, and they track everything, and they just that's how they find it. And it, it, was, it just sucked. I, and I think that I'm not sure if anything would have happened, but it was just another chance. Yeah, it's, it's, it would have been more help. It's just another it's chance. It's just more, and more volunteer help. Def, not, yeah, major help. I spent 10 years, but I think that I think the only way they're going to find out something drastic is somebody gets old, pissed off, or some yeah. kind of feeling some kind of way they're going to die or some shit and then finally say something later down the road. But who yeah. knows, you know, if that happens. But my thing is, is this a, if it's a family matter, that shit may go to the grave because everybody's, everybody's in the loop then, you know? I've never been able to figure that dynamic out because they have telephone calls that we recorded. I don't know if you've ever heard them. I mean, no, I, I heard about them. You got all, I want to, I want to hear them. When, when can we hear them? I, uh, what, 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 I'm here to Sunday, Monday, Sunday, I mean, Sunday. I got them, I got them on my phone. Let's hear some of them. All right, but let's turn the camera off for that. Okay, okay you want to keep talking? Now? Yeah, we can keep talking. Okay, all right, okay. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. I, also, you sure you want to hear them? Yeah. Okay. Because okay. I've heard them before. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I want to hear them. Yeah, I know, I know. Mm -hmm. I know. I, I, got, make sure. I, I got blood in this shit. You know what I, mean? know, I know. I know. Right. I, know. Easier, I keep I'm everything here. on the cloud, and then this phone is just okay, like cool. a dial yeah, yeah, yeah. in the cloud. Um, okay, cool, yeah. So there's another a a angle that I'm going, and it kind of ties into what you were just saying, but it's about, um, and I've brought, and I've already interviewed people, uh, experts in, in the field of, um, I don't know if you ever heard of this term, uh, missing white woman syndrome. You ever heard of that before? No. It's the theory uh, that. When a miss, when a, when a white girl goes missing, everyone gives a sh gives a shit. Oh, that yeah. I've like heard Natalie of. Holloway we we never had a name Felicia for it. Yeah. yeah. So, so the Natalie yeah, Holloway, we, for, not Natalie Holloway versus Felicia Barnes is my exact 
thought. Yeah. Right. But so you know, what I did was I, I interviewed the guy. So it was a private investigator who um, did a lot of the investigation initially for the Natalie Holloway case. It was on TV all the time and everything. I got a hold of that son of a bitch. And he, Edit that out. No, I'm not. <laughs> not about that name, man. I'm not smarter than you. <laughs> that's mine. Yeah, but I wanted to keep talking to me. <laughs> no, that's fine. Oh, but he, uh, but he, uh, he was up there for, um, you know, he we're, 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 he flew out, you know, and he was there for uh, uh, like ten or fifteen days and was doing, you know, the media every day. And he and I spoke, and I said, you know, why do you think, you know, I was trying to get his, you know, opinion. Why do you think that that case got so much uh, publicity? And he's like, oh, you know, tourists out of town and a money trapped city. And you know, all these things, you know, you can take them into account, but the, the, there's, there's one stark difference here is, well, there's a bunch of stark differences is Natalie Holloway wasn't an honor student. Natalie Holloway, and Felicia was. Natalie Holloway, um, you know, was in, a, was in a foreign town like mm -hmm. Felicia was, but you know, the only difference that I can see is that Natalie Holloway was white. And that's, you know, but, but that's not, yeah. that's not, a secret. Right. Everybody knows this. Now let me tell you something yeah. else. Do you know why Felicia got the attention she got? Because you guys worked your ass off together. Not only day. that, look at her. Yeah, she's beautiful. She's beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. Honest student. Visiting Baltimore. Pretty as hell. Now honestly, we looked for all kinds. Of, during the time when we were looking for her, we had other families contacting us and asking us, how come my daughter's not getting the same attention as Felicia Barnes? Yeah. You know, why? And a lot of times, this is, this is America. We don't give a shit about ugly people. We don't care. <laughs> but I'm just saying, yeah, if sure. you're black, you're ugly, you're poor, you're right. disabled, you got all this other shit, you don't count. Yeah. So, you know? So I spent so, a lot of time on that. Like, trying, well, trying to figure out what, you know. But, you know. It's, it's a true thing. And, and it's, you, same thing. Look at the kids. Look at the kids. You, you get yourself a little white girl, a white kid on there, everybody's looking. You, you even got the Amber Alerts going. Everything's going. Yeah. But you get a little black kid, it's not a big deal. Yeah. You know, and, and but we deal with that shit all the time because this is Baltimore City. Yeah. You know, and yeah. we get calls. We don't get calls when soon as the kid goes missing. We get we get the calls a month or two months or three months later when the police and the community and everybody else stops talking to the families. Because what happened? You know, oh my kid's missing. Every single day, your kid's missing. Every single day, you're waiting for that kid to come through the door. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, your neighbor stopped talking to you, some of your relatives, because nobody wants to hear this over and over and over and over. And that's when we start getting the calls. Then we hold our honk for the missings. We do our videos. Yeah. We do our postings. We start bringing attention back into it. And then all of a sudden, you know, and then a lot of times law enforcement say, ah, shit, the guardian angels are going to do our right, send, job stuff. Send the cop into <laughs> there. These guys. Yeah, they're these, these fucking guys. Well, that's why yeah. I brought that up, because it ties directly into what yeah, you said. It's, it's, exactly. a, it's a big deal. And, yeah. and you're right, because we, we I mean, you, we got some posters over there. The majority of them, we got tons of posters and missing posters, posters that we deal with. And, and you can tell who is going to garnish the most attention. And, you know, if they're white and poor and from the city somewhere, you know, first thing they're going to say is, ah, he's a crack or somewhere, he's gone, you know, it's right. not that big of a deal. But, you know, go to Annapolis or Harford County or some place like that or, 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 or Carroll County yeah. and grab one of your little Snow White princesses out there and let them go missing and yeah. see what happens yeah. then. Exactly. You know, you got issues. Exactly. And I did, I did a case, it's similarly, it's not the exact same thing because it wasn't a missing person, but, I mean, this is true for all of us. The majority of people have never heard of Polycarpio Espinosa, who's a defendant. The, I worked this case when I was uh, younger, I was still a law clerk. But in that case, it's an uncle and a cousin of three kids aged 8, 9, and 10. The uncle and the cousin, for unknown reasons, still to this day, go to the apartment where those kids are and chop their heads off. I remember that. So you remember because I, re I remember the that media, the media that sensationalized the, yes. the fact that the kids got their heads off. That's but, right. <laughs> but they were Hispanic children, so you really didn't and hear much more about it other no, than that. No, yeah, and, right. and, and when you did, it was it was because they were talking about it was a uh, um either an MS thirteen thing or uh, what is what is the country where they where they go uh, hack you up That's in a heartbeat? Yes. Yes, yeah, something like that. And and that was the big deal. So now the three kids what real like you said, they weren't really focused on it. Was the sensational it was the sensation of the how the violence of the yeah, crime exactly. and and the um the, the it was the this ethnic group that does this violent type stuff. 
This and you know people still talk about that. And that's it. That's that was it. That's a that that was crazy. That case that case really gets. I, I, I'll tell you. I got. I mean, I got some. I've done some pretty messed up cases. I also did the oh, oh, actual when I became a prosecutor. I did all the Freddie Gray cases. I was one of the prosecutors on those cases. Uh, I got some shit that really haunts me at night. I'll tell you, man. You know what? That, <laughs> the, 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 look, let me tell you something. We, we were involved. I, I remember, you know, Elijah Cummins says, hey, Strider, come on down. We're going to shut the streets off. We're going to get everybody out of here. We're gonna, and I, and I, I went down with him twice, and I said to him, you know what? I'm not coming back. He says, well, why not? I said, because you guys are trying to say, <laughs> say you got a curfew at 10 o'clock. Now you got the guardian angels down there, you got Captain Pew down there, you got you down here, we got all these people down here, and you look behind you, and you got a whole mass of people following you, telling all the people in front of you to go home. I said, all oh, my guys are going home, man, I'm not coming down here. I, mean, I, went, I went twice, yeah. I went twice, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, you got a curfew. Well, it's okay, you guys come down here, you can help us send everybody home. Well, if you get off the streets and send all these cameras and shit to hell home, Nobody's gonna be out here. They're here right. because you're here. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But that, that was that's the bullshit. Yeah, you it was can't send those people home. Whatever. There was a lot going on. Yeah. Oh my god. It, you, you can't send them home and they should have went to hell home, but yeah, don't don't send them home, home and then they have CNN crews and shit out there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I'm you know, hey, hey, we're gonna shut the streets off. <laughs> I, I remember. The hell out of here. Yeah. I remember leaving uh what verdict was that? That was the last verdict. Oh no, the van driver. That would have been um Caesar Goodson. So there was a second trial that we had. I swear, I left with the trial team. You know, we get the not guilty. And this is just an aside. This has nothing to do with what we're talking about. It's me bringing back my right. traumatic memories of it. Right. I remember memory. sneaking out the side of the courthouse with the whole trial team. And there was, but like you were saying, there was helicopters up in the air. Uh -huh. There was all kinds of news. And I swear that with the noises, with the helicopters and all the people yelling and shit, it felt like a goddamn war zone. Yeah. Just trying to run through. You're trying to I, I run through that. people. Because I'm with Mike Chatzow and uh, Jan Bledsoe from the same Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're very I love Jane. They're very, oh, yeah. yeah I she, love she's her. Great. Yeah. She's great. But they're, they're very recognizable at this point. And I'm, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm the third chair on the case, so I'm not I'm not as recognizable as them. No one, no, no one cares. You're not as pretty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're not as pretty as Jane either. <laughs> no offense, Dick. Yeah. Uh, so we, we, we sneak out, though, and I'll tell you what. I have never started drinking in the office <laughs> at 10 30 a.m. <laughs> at 10 30. But I did that day. <laughs> uh, I'm telling you, man, that was a. I don't know. We have to talk about that kind of stuff because that was a rough time, that too. Was fucked up, man. I remember, I mean, it was all because of this yeah, case. I because of this case, that uh, when, I was, uh, uh, when I was a law clerk, so I come, you know, I come get, become a prosecutor, and then that case, and then Freddie Gray comes up. And, Lucky you. Yeah, and that's how that's how <laughs> that's how you pulled on. They saw what I did for this case. They pulled me up to the front office in the creepiest way possible. Se most secretive way. <laughs> creepy's not the creepy's not the creepy's not the I, don't know. I think I think he's right with that creepy part. So what well, what they did was I get a call from deputy commissioner, um, and, and she says and I'm in district court and she says, John, I need you to just uh hang up the phone, don't tell your supervisor, and come down to the front office downtown. Let me tell you, I got a pregnant wife. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm getting fired, yeah. and I'm scheduled to look at a house at five o'clock that day, a new house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause now, my, now my wife wants a house because I got it pregnant. So, yeah, yeah, so um, I said to the deputy, I said, I have a meeting uh, with the realtor to look at a house at five. Should I just cancel that? And she said, Yeah, but you're not in trouble. And I said, Okay. What what the F's? <laughs> said, what the hell? So I get in my car and it's the longest 10 minute drive in the world. And I drive downtown from, uh, this is North, North, mm -hmm. uh, Baltimore. And I come in and walk into the front office and it's heavily guarded because, you know, once, um, Greg Bernstein, yeah. you know, he got all the doors locked and everything. So you can't get into the front office when Greg Bernstein was there and then Mosey kept it. Right. Um, like that. And I walk in and I see Janet Bledsoe and I say, uh, I'm John Butler. We'd never, I'd never met her before. And she goes, Oh, you're John Butler. And I said, oh, God, oh, what damn. the fuck did I do? <laughs> Sits me in a conference room just like this, a table just like this. It was circular and actually a piece of glass and it's wood. Sitting there and Jan comes in. She's just shooting the shit. Mike Shatzow comes in. I'm telling you, he is got a tie half, <laughs> halfway down. It's like, it's, like, it's like a cartoon where like the tie is tied like right here. Right. Hair yeah. is like up, you know, it's disheveled. Always, always, wow. And he comes and he talks to me, he sits down, and he explains every, oh, he explains how he heard about my work on this Felicia Barnes case. Mm -hmm. And he says, um, we want to put you on the trial team. We know what we're going to do, but we'll give you the weekend to think about it. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> yeah, so I didn't have a choice. And that so, was... 
So what did you think? I mean, what is your whole assessment of this thing? I mean, why you want to put together a podcast? I mean, what do you think? Well, so the reason, there's, there's a few reasons. There's, there's one, um, and it's, it's, it's selfish, but there's unfinished business from being a part of the trial team on the first trial. They got a guilty verdict and then didn't, um, nothing came of it because it's, a, it's a, what I personally perceive to be someone who committed the crime being a free person. Mm -hmm. That's selfish. So you think you think he was guilty? I do. Oh, wait a minute, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm just, I, hey, I'm just, uh, all I'm doing is saying I want to make sure I'm talking to the right person and I think his ass is guilty. Because he, he was right there. But let, but let, me, let me tell you this. Let me put it like this. Though. My opinion doesn't matter. I think that the presentation of the facts, um, whereas I don't necessarily disagree with some of the counterpoints as to why it wasn't a guilty verdict. Because the reasonable doubt standard is so high. When you lose James McRae, who was the key witness in the case, he only testifies in the first trial. Yeah. The trial gets a lot thinner. It gets the evidence gets feels a lot thinner. He right. kind of pulled everything together. Mm -hmm. um, but having said that, that doesn't un, that doesn't waver my personal belief mm -hmm. that this happened, regardless of whether or not it's provable. But I don't think you need to go as far as to advocate for that. I think the purpose of this podcast is to present the evidence objectively present the evidence without a slant so that people can make their own judgment as to what occurred because there is stuff on both sides but I do think in the, in, in the end um, if you view the evidence without anyone telling you what you should be thinking that you will come to the same conclusion that I have having spent 10 months on this case. That's one of jury members too, you know, regardless of That too, what. which and that whole thing with, with the Judge Nance is an aberration. Yes. It's a very strange situation. Yes. So, now, yes. But that's yes. one. That's, yes. that, 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 that's, sorry, that's, that's, that's two points. Mm -hmm. One's selfish, one's what I think the facts show. But the third is what I already told you about missing white woman syndrome. And the fourth is kind of more convoluted, but it's, it's definitely a point um, where I think that we have lost the meaning in our society of the, the term justice. There is no term justice anymore. <laughs> it's I, not, you think about it's not this is 2000. This is, this, is, this is 2020. Okay. Sadly, we live in a society where basically, well, it's going to sound shitty, right, but that's right. okay. Right, you know, right. but you, you, you live, you, you know, you, we've seen criminals who are black do stupid shit mm -hmm. and everybody including the community wants to protect that <laughs> because right. that person looks like you right. and okay now if Alicia Barnes was killed by a white guy okay not only would he went to court three times but we'd have marches in the street and it'd have been ass kicking out there it'd, it'd look like a Freddie Gray riot this is true. you know but you know you're talking you're, you're, you're talking about you know here in the same Place where in Baltimore County, where a, a black kid with, with an ankle bracelet on runs over a police officer while they're rob while they're robbing the house, and everybody goes crazy and tries to protect him. Yeah, you know, so it, it's a shitty deal, and you you sit there and you shake your head like, what the hell? But at the same time, this is kind of different because you think about it. During those trials with Michael Bar, well, with Michael Johnson when he got out, <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. I remember I, I could still see this shit in my, I'm looking at the television, I'm watching this guy come out the courthouse, he's been locked up, you yeah. know, he's walking down the street and there's nobody there to pick him up. Right. He couldn't even get a cab. Right. Yeah. You know, and you're saying to yourself, well, wait a minute, if he's so innocent, where's all his family right. and friends right. and people that saying, oh my God, you're being unchristly juicy, you know, right. you're, 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 this is crazy. Right. You know, he came out, he's walking down the street by himself. The only people with him was 545. Right. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, yeah. So now, what happens now? Let's say you get your podcast going and the community says, huh, maybe somebody should look at this again. This guy went to court three times. No, nothing can happen. And that's so, the only way that there can be, um, and this is where it ties back into the use of the word justice, the only way there can be some perceived justice is simply just putting the information out there and making it more well known to people um, and letting people make their own Call as yeah, but what is, where's just to come in if they make their own cause? Uh, it's, 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 it's just to say, you know, we know what you did, you're guilty. It's a court of public opinion. I mean, we're not, get, we're not getting past that now. So if we do nothing, we're not getting past that. But if we do this, we're doing at least something. Well, I don't have a problem with standing up and telling you he's a prick. I just think, because I, I just, but you know, but there's so many of him out there. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the kind of shit that agitates me. And there's so many out there like him. Now, within the 10 years, 
every year we do something. Every honk, everything we yeah. do comes back to Felicia Barnes because this is the one that kind of snatches my heart. It really makes me sick to my stomach. Me too. We have people that, you know, uh, Sharice Raggins who went missing. I'm still friends with her mom. I talk to her all, you know, and text her and see how she's doing. Her daughter went missing, okay? Boyfriend, never found. He ended up going to jail though, and I'll give you that information. You can look at that and see yeah. what the difference is. Never found the body. Hmm. Never found her body. To this day, we have no idea what the hell she is. Is that a Baltimore City case? Yeah, yeah. What, yeah. what year was that? Did that occur? Um, I'll let you know. I got all the information on her. Actually, there's a, there's a whole bunch of flyers and stuff here for her. Maybe. But I, I still talk to her mom. But yeah, her never been found. But they they did lock his ass up. Mm -hmm. You know. But where is she? Let me let me let me finish this thought because uh, because I do really like where you're going with this. I think that I don't know if you're interested, but I like that. You know, another angle could be getting some. Something positive that came out of this is that you guys are, you know what I mean? I, that's I the that's... part that, and, and see, that's the part, and even even with HBO, yeah. one of the things I told them, you know, because it, it sucks that you, you know, 2,300 people go missing every day, every yeah. 40 seconds a kid, okay? So you can't find all these people. So what the hell do you get out of it? Yeah. We get the relationships out of it. We have family members that we can call and say, hey, we're going to do this, can they? and they come out. We had a lady whose daughter went missing in Baltimore City. They lived in Florida. Yeah. They left Florida, came all the way to, no, they left North Carolina to go all the way to Panama City Beach to help us look for somebody else's kid who okay. went missing from Texas. You know, so what do you get out of it is you get a network of families that come together to help other families, like Russell and them. They do everything they can. They're involved in it. You could have just sat home and stayed pissed. You know what I mean? Yeah. But... You yeah. know, we have the ties to all these people that we help. San Antonio, Texas, all the, th the three angels that go down there, each one of them has a family member missing. Yeah. And they joined us because of Felicia Barnes. But before that, they were all part of our Honk for the Missing campaign. Okay. And Texas has the biggest group. I mean, they got tons. I went down there and, oh, my God, it's amazing. But, you know, when you go to these places and you see the families that – participate in your home. Now, this is something that goes on all around the world, and you meet them, and yeah. then they say, hey, we want to become guardian angels and help other families. That's what you get out of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And now you're building this great big network of, of people who want to help and people who have actually felt the pain. I shit you not. Somebody takes my kids. I guarantee you there's going to be some mad scientist somewhere trying to genetically put one together just like him because they know I'm going to burn the shit out of this planet. <laughs> I'll tell you what, they're going to have to build me a kid and, and say we found it. Because I'll tell you what, I, 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 I have so much respect for family members who are like Russell, you know, and, and Natty and Paula you're down, down in Texas who go through this. Yeah. Because I shit you not, I'm telling you, boy... They got to delete that because I tell you what, they're, they're, <laughs> something happens to my kid. I shit you not. I'm coming after everybody. And I, I think this, just setting this up like with, with it working like this is going to help because we're going through to we got 20th century laws. Like we, I always talk about 20th century laws. Now we got 21st century things, podcasts, things like that. We can we can uh, really you can do a lot. Know, we can do a lot. And and this situation right here, John, you pull it and you'll watch how many kids, how many. Uh, young people start watching their podcast because they really into the podcast and they start looking around. But you're just building a culture. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. And but you're exactly change. right because my yeah, thing is anything about it. you may not find all the ones that are missing, right. but you can help educate the ones yes. so they don't go missing. Yes. That kid there is my, that's my son mm -hmm. who did the poster for that, that missing thing. And he's 11 now. And he still does the videos every year to promote the home. Mm -hmm. And I get the kids involved, but you mm -hmm. want to use them because you want to. And I don't want to go home and say, Thomas, you know you're going to end up with, you know. Right. But they know because of all the shit that I go through with angels and phone calls and missing person, and all this stuff. They know. They'll tell you in a heartbeat, Dad, I'm right over here. They don't, they don't. I have a 14 year old son at home. He, we're outside playing ball. I can't see him. He's letting me know, hey, I'm, I'm right here. Because they know I'm going to lose my shit because it's. It's just that scary, yeah. you know, and it, yeah. it takes out oh, there that long. I know that long. I know it's 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 a really effed up thing. Like it is. It, 
what it psychologically does. I mean, I have two kids now too, and I won't even. How like, old are your kids? One's four, one's one and a half. Mm-hmm. So like, I get fucked. Like a four four year old is just the right age for to, to not know any better, but to be smart enough to go to think that they can go further away from home than mm-hmm. than they should, but to not know enough to you know fight right. off someone right. or start right. screaming if some stranger lures you into his car. Because you don't you don't think that way as a kid. The world the world is supposed to be a safe place for you. Yeah. There's something beautiful about that and there's something it's it's scary. It's scary. It's scary. Like, this is this is this is <laughs> let me tell you something. Twenty twenty has just showed us that we're lucky <laughs> as a tomorrow at all. Yeah, you're right. right. You're right. You know, and it's it's just it's just a shitty place to be. So finishing mm-hmm. finishing this, so finishing what the purposes are, I I feel like to an extent that you've really helped me provide another purpose which mm-hmm. is what's come out of it. i think that that's a good thing what you guys are doing generally what comes out with the bonds of families who are helping you folks and you know i, I gotta think about this and you and i gotta talk well, you and i definitely have to keep in touch and talk more no doubt but um you know this could be a, a follow like the last episode of like you know what's good you're doing but having said that the, the last point that i really got into this for was to um back it's on the term justice what i was saying before and it's because I feel like there's some um, dissolution, or we use the term. So if you go, if you trace it back to like Plato and Socrates, and the, you know, in the you know zero BC, uh, one BC, whatever it is, uh, they they would use the term justice, and they would they would put a lot of clarifiers on it. They would put social justice mm-hmm. or you know procedural justice. I feel like we just use the term justice, and we just all assume that it means something when. We all perceive the justice differently, and and that, that's another angle that I got into and because I want people I to not that. lose hope in our system, our judicial system. Now there are so many problems in our judicial system, mainly coming down to the fact that persons of color are you know disproportionately jailed. So that's something that we have to, uh, of course, address. But the idea that the trial can be fair and that there is justice depending upon how you're viewing it, and there are different views of justice, well, needs to be, I think, further uh, explained. And, and, for, and so people can understand that it's not all a sham. We just gotta, you know, you just gotta look at look at the term and, and, and you gotta clarify the term. And, and people need to understand that it's not just a term justice used in a million different ways that, or, I guess, that well, makes and, and the thing, it, it's sad because especially now, 2020, which I keep using as reference, because mm-hmm. we're just, this is, this is one fucked up year. Yeah, right. But at the same time, you on. talked about, <laughs> oh my God, dude. <laughs> don't even get, tell it, Jazz, don't oh get me started. I will leave my, I'll you, I'm waiting for the Secret Service to come get me from all the shit I post on this page. <laughs> but, but the thing is, when you talk about justice, now that opens up a whole nother door. Make sure you get his information. You can send him an application. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna yeah. shanghai his ass. Yeah. But you think about it, now you talk about justice. We've got we've got so much. You've got you've got the trial justice. You got you got the, the missing white lady justice. Yeah. You got Black Lives Matter justice. Yeah. All this stuff comes into play, especially now because right now we're trying to figure out where the hell does justice fit in and right. what exactly is it now. Right. Okay. She don't even know. Well, no, that's why she's blind, folks. She don't want to see this shit. You know, but the thing is, you, you think about it, you know? She's like, oh, oh no. I caught that late. That was funny. Yeah, you know? She don't want to see this shit. But at the same time, you think about it, we had, had a president who basically threw justice and honor right out the damn door. 61 more days. Fuck. 61 more days, God, dude. Look, let's just hope we don't push the button. I know. Let's just take the football from him, stick his ass in the room somewhere for a while because you don't know what he's going to do. But at the same time, now we have half a country. Half of our country is divided to the point where... where for that piece of shit. Yeah, and, well, yeah but, and here's the thing. I like, like We were just talking about, you know, if I said, oh, we got to go to war because... Who are you going to fight? Right. Who are we fighting? Okay, what justice are you looking for? Yeah. What kind of justice? You looking for Trump justice? You looking for presidential right? I want to be the king justice? Or yeah. what the hell? I mean, it, it's, it's, it's just a shitty place to be right now. Mm-hmm. It's terrible because you're right. I mean, what, what do we gain? Because uh, so we're on the brink of a civil war. What does that do? It's cri- crippled yeah, our but, economy. It fucks everyone. Right, but who's the civil... Now, you know, back when, when Lincoln was president in the civil war, it was easy to know who was fighting who. You know yeah. what I mean? You were yeah. fighting because of this and that. Yeah. Okay, now who do you fight? All mm-hmm. I know is that my president in, in 
2021 on January the 1st, 2020, <laughs> will have the military in his pocket. <laughs> well, that's all I know. <laughs> I tell you what, they better they better step it up because I'm. I, uh. Anyway, <laughs> but for the sake of what we're doing right here, and especially now, I want to work on something for Felicia Barnes for next month. And I want to include all these people. I want to get interviews and question them and talk to them about what's going on and talk about things here. I yeah. want to go through my photos. You can see pictures here. Some yeah. of them. I got tons of pictures. you have pictures. photos from your search? Dude, I got, yeah. I got photos of everything. I took photos of everything. Everything. Can I take a picture of that? I'll send them to you. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I'll send them to you. Awesome. Because that, those are all. We got pictures of everything. You know, we got, we got pictures of everything. This was actually... This was actually one of the first um, balloon things that we've done. Okay. You know, this is like the first search. This is like another. Mm -hmm. This is like after the Baltimore City and State Police got involved. But I have different stages. Do you have a date too? Like, were they, yeah, they yeah, have yeah, dates? Yeah, yeah, I got all that shit. Okay. This is, I mean, I got the first picture when I met Russell and Dina. Oh, yeah. oh, that's, that's not the first one. Right. The first one I met was him and Dina when we were alone right. and we talked. You see, yeah. you see Donald Rondo or uh, Harry? Uh, we got everything, uh, everything that we've done, we've got I've pictures of. Good Donald Rondo. Is he here? Is he Guardian Angel? No. Uh, he's he plays Guardian Angel? No. He's the guy that put together like a, uh, what, what he gave? Like, he, he used he, to be in military intelligence. He's, he, he, would, would he be in a news report at some point? No. He, oh, I don't, I don't know what he is. He gave I watched a lot of his news clips from this. Yeah, he gave, he, a, was, he gave a donation for Felicia Barnes okay. at one time. He was already there. Now, this is the billboard. Mm -hmm. That's the yeah. I got pictures of all that stuff. I'll send you some stuff. Okay. Yeah. And you know always Google it too. Well, I mean, I Google it. I mean, I, I know where all this stuff's from. But to have someone firsthand oh, yeah. taking the pictures or oh, well, well, some well, what I did last night, which is why I wanted to bring my uh, my laptop, was because I actually went through and I got a timestamp for all the stuff that we did. Okay. You Perfect. Know? And I mean everything from going to working with Jill Carter and the yeah. police's law. Every, I got all that stuff. Okay, perfect. I actually have. I have been text. It's been a while, but I was texting Jill Carter, and then she stopped. I just texting texted me. her today. Yeah. I just texted her today. Get her to get her to answer my text and let me interview her because she just ghosted me. She's busy as hell. I figured she was. I figured she is. She's busy, but but yeah, I did. I just I just texted her a little while ago. You might try to get it. Wonderful. This, this is still a good email for you? Email and uh, phone number. Okay, can I write mine on yours? Yes. Yeah, but um, but yeah, I'll send you and put your email on there. Too. I'll put my phone number and my email. Because I can send you all that stuff. And are yeah. you on Facebook? Yep. All right, I'm going to give you my, uh, my, my, it's, and I, I posted stories and write ups on my webpage too. Okay. But yeah, we got all that stuff. Okay. And I'll tell you what I can do to uh, reciprocate if you ever need help with. I have a recording studio that I do. You don't need anything with that. That'll work. <laughs> I mean, that's how I'm doing it. Like, so I got frustrated because um, I had all this support for this uh, set up to help me produce this, so I didn't mm -hmm. have to do everything myself. And then COVID hit. So it's, that that's how I can continue to produce it now. It's at a very slow rate relative to what I do if I had a team of people. Helping. Right. But um, I'm, I'm pretty close to, or I, I've been pretty close to being done the first episode. I told Russell this. Mm -hmm. um, you know. I, I guess my my thing is that I um I need some objective someone you know some objective criticism on it which would have been helpful if I had a team of people help me. Well, but you know it's pretty much recorded. Yeah, and and now I'm gonna give you Jazz's number too because one thing about Jazz Jazz put together uh, I'll send you some of the videos yeah. that she put together as well. But right now, now oh, yeah, sorry, and Jazz, Jazz tell me your cell number. No, it's four one zero. Sure. Seven 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 three seven three one. Okay, and now, I um Jazz put together a lot of our videos and a lot of our documentation and stuff, so a lot of shit that she she knows, so okay. and she can help you navigate around whatever yeah. it is you need. Yeah, you know. Is so is it an audio podcast or? Oh yeah, just strictly audio. audio. Have you gone to Audible Studios? Um, with it, because they've been doing a lot of crime drama documentaries. Audible. Audible. Uh, yeah, so Audible, I, th I think Audible is, I think I looked into it, and I can't remember exactly which one that Audible is, but I feel like Audible is like, uh, it's a platform. So like, They are, but they just launched a their own um, stuff or? podcast um, division. Well, I mean, production. I'm always looking for help, and I will, you know, obviously, uh, you know, anyone who helps me can get cut in on anything that they want. Well, you know, my thing is, look, I, we just like building our relationships. We're good. Some, you know, so, if they want some, some, some credentials for doing work, yeah. you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, you know, or 
Uh, you know, I'm not looking to make money off of this, but I'm sure that if it's a, if it would be well, a successful Audible podcast, is, um, it would. Have you heard of the Audible? If they stay, they're the booksellers. The yeah, Audible no, no. Book I, yeah, sellers. I have that on my, yeah, on my yeah. son's so, uh, uh, We I use it a lot. And yeah. so they just launched their um, podcast division a few months oh, ago. Oh, that's how I've heard of Audible. Okay. Yes. So that's on, um, um, they will actually Alexa. Um, buy them and promote them. And, wow. Um, hmm. They promote them as part of their Audible Premium Plus package. Okay. So they will monetize it. Huh. Mm -hmm. See the, I, I, so I if you send them your one good. sheet, they might bite based on what we have and what you come up with for your... So yeah, I mean that's the thing. I, I know I just haven't. Um, I've only reached out to sources that I know to be like really credible. Like I haven't tried like you know to to just throw this thing out to anyone who will listen to me. I literally went to NPR and I literally went to Crime Junkie because they're really popular and I knew that it could be beneficial. I know that this is. I know that the angle. What I'm trying to uh, help people understand and and using you know this case to help remember Felicia doing so. I know that that's. I know that that's good. I know that we can. You know, mm -hmm. we can help people with. This. Well, and the thing yeah. is, if that's what you want to continue doing, now, like I said, we got Guy Khan for Peas in Their Pod, who is one of our partners, who is amazing. Right. Yeah, she's and and she's also she's also her, the sad thing is she's a psychiatrist also. Yeah. Because she's got to listen to my bullshit, <laughs> and I'll say, oh, Guy Khan, <laughs> you know. But she's amazing also. She runs okay. Peas in Their Pod. We have. Claudia Rivero, who is a reporter out of Philadelphia, okay. who does a lot of missing person cases too. She did a couple of videos, I'll send them to you. Okay. And I did talk to her about helping put this thing together for next month for Felicia also. And, um, but what I wanna do is, is get Claudia and Guy Khan and, and um, all the players for this. And I wanna have a big Zoom meeting and talk about the initial thought of what we wanna to put together. And you are more than welcome to yes. doing that. I think 100%. it would be beneficial. Because the thing about it is now you have so many players that are all like-minded. And like I said, this is Felicia's case is probably the most high profile, yeah. but it's one of many. Yeah. We have um, uh, Sh 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 Sharice Clark, who went missing with her daughter on the same day. They know it's the boyfriend, yeah. but- Trish Ragan? No, not Sharice Ragan, Sharice, Sharice and Joanna Clark. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Who is a mother and daughter, mm -hmm. okay? So the, the daughter goes missing, and then two hours later, the mother goes missing. Huh. Never found them. Never huh. found them, okay? They've been missing four years now. Huh. So we've been dealing with that, you know? I mean, but, but these are all out here. Yeah. And, you know, you talk to the police department, and a lot of a lot of the, the, the words is that the boyfriend was interested in the daughter, and he bumped her off, then he bumped the mother off, and I love it. And this lady has six other kids, six other kids that the boyfriend has. So I'm dealing with, I'm still communicating with the mom. He's now he's now the custodian for the, the six yeah. kids. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit. So, but this is but this is the kind of shit that you say to yourself, what the hell? So what we all try to do is collectively bring attention to this. Somehow, because as you see, the mainstream media, they, you know, they're, they're, they're done. Yeah, unless you're, you know, you so you have to put together what you can, how you can. But for what we're doing right now, immediately, I want to put together a a Zoom call with the players. Mm -hmm. And like I said, you're welcome to do that. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping to do that on a on a weekend. You know, where we can all get together and talk about this. And that includes the people from Monroe, where. Felicia uh, lived and went to school. Okay. Um, people in Atlanta, well, Guy Khan, San Antonio, and all these people who were involved, involved 10 years ago yeah. that are still involved and still doing stuff with us. Okay. You know, I'm so, I mean, that's a big, that's a big circle thing here, but it runs, it, it opens so many different shit, you know? Yeah. And, and like I said, HBO is in the loop, and like I said, they, we want to talk, they're, they're, they're definitely going to be doing stuff. They, they would have been here today. Um, but uh, there's no time, and I, I did speak to them this morning twice. But this is this is what happens. I mean, you know, we, we you want to bring attention to it, you want to keep things going, mm -hmm. but you got to do it in a way that you go behind the scenes and get the public and community's attention and get them aware. But yeah. also, you want to be proactive instead of waiting for the next kid to get missing again. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. but that's what we want to do. So, so <clears throat> not not to. Uh jump off topic but 
Could me and you set up an interview about what, specifically about what you recall about the Felicia Barnes? It could yeah. be via telephone. It could be in person. Either but, uh, way, we can. I got, you know, I got a good app on my phone that I bought to record these yeah. uh, these interviews. But um, yeah, we'll set up a time. We'll yeah, that's not a problem. We'll knock it off. I, I think that I really think that this can, uh, if if you would be into it, I think that this could be beneficial to the, um, you know, another another episode of the podcast. You know, mm -hmm. showing what came out of this. You know. Yeah, like, and I think that. With your involvement, if you want to be, I mean, I think I this is great. I think that you because, I love, like I, I said, love your call. I love with, this cause. With Claudia uh, Rivero, the report out of Philadelphia, her and her husband's work, yeah. with Guy Khan's work, and even with HBO, I think this will be a big deal. Yeah. And I think we can fill in a lot of those gaps, Russell, mm -hmm. that yeah. a lot of other people don't know. Because, like you said, you didn't know the involvement of what the Guardian Angels had done and all right. the hell we've been through. Right. You know, you know your end of it. But, and you don't know what happened in, in Monroe, you know, with the teachers and the students and the friends and right. all the people that we, I mean, there's so exactly. many parts of this shit. Yes. Mm -hmm. it, it's yes. just a mess and it, it just, it makes your head hurt, really. Yeah. No, no, I would love to get that, that side. I mean, and, and if there's any, ever any questions with, from anyone about how this went down, I don't know why, but I remember dates like that. You know, you did, yeah, <laughs> oh, my, that occurred on my, my, blah, blah, blah. my wife's like that, that, mm -hmm. that is just, I, I mean, it's crazy. I'll say, oh, I remember the, oh, yeah, that's the day, the such and such and such. <laughs> I mean, to the detail, and I just look at her, and I was just like, damn, that's scary, dude. You got, you got oh, a good she, <laughs> she's, a, she's a lawyer, too, though, so. Is she? Yeah, yeah. What kind of law she do? Yeah, she does, she does financial law now. Okay, gotcha. So, yeah, she's, she's, she's. Yeah, you know, God this... bless her, because she can't, she tries to keep my ass in line, too. <laughs> Be careful what, I... what you say. Watch what you post. Ba 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 ba. Ah. <laughs> well, that must be a tall task. It <laughs> is. <You realize? laughs> it is. I've only met you for an hour. Now. It is. Yeah. Oh my God, dude. She goes crazy. <laughs> I mean, I'll post something and she'll say, "I'll hear on the other room." Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> what? I mean, do you guys um, do you guys uh have uh? Like you take donations and stuff. For like, we do. We don't get any, but we take them. No, I'm saying, I'm saying. What, what I, I told Russell this too when I started doing the podcast. Yeah, we, yeah. If, if this ever did make money, there's a portion. Yeah, yeah. Of, yeah, portion of the take, money we, I need. I need to send take, somewhere. Yeah, it yeah. needs to be. Not, we don't get any, but we take them. Okay. You know, okay. but yeah, but but like I said, you know, I think that I think that uh, if you're interested between and even not just Felicia Barnes's case, there's so much that we can do. Now, what I'm trying to reach out again with Jill Carter because. She started the Felicia's Law, yeah. which is a big deal. But yeah. the thing about it is, is nobody ever did anything to put the damn thing in play. Let's put it to play. Let's put the thing thing to work. Yeah, you know, and, and let's make it happen. Yeah. So yeah. there's so much we got to do. It's a, it's a lot, but it, I, it's it's worth it. I texted headache. her and it was sorry. I was just gonna breathe for a second. I That's texted right. her at like um, that was a year ago, two years, no, a year and a half ago, like six thirty in the morning. I don't know why the hell I texted her that early. Uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, I get up early because the kids. But she texted me right back, and then I said, okay, well, let's set up a meeting. Never heard anything. Uh, <laughs> she she waited a couple months, texted her again. Hey, hey, uh, Senator Carter. No, she she <laughs> usually answers. Like I said, I just texted her with a picture of uh of Russell. Mm -hmm. So she she texts So she'll she'll get to us. Okay. But we'll uh I'll yeah, set up okay. something and maybe we can just you know because I, I she actually went with me to meet with our uh, HBO to talk about the Felicia's law. And I'm trying to get the state police back on board and all that shit to get to just get it moving. And once we get it built here mm -hmm. with the proper procedures and put in place and all that, then we can duplicate this in Atlanta and San Antonio, Texas and other cities, which basically means, hey, you know, you got five cops handling how many other missing person cases. Let's go to the private sector, pick a team and let them guys run with the ball and give you the manpower and the extra help that you need to, to, to make this stuff happen. Yeah. And that's what we need. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing anyway. Mm -hmm. So, and Baltimore City will call us in a heartbeat. Yeah. You know, and so will Harford County. So. Well, I'll say this, man. People always talk about doing stuff. It sounds like you're really doing shit. That's inspiring to me. Well, yeah, you know. It does. It really does. Well, thank you. But I, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of excited to, to hear what we got on this stuff. So we can, not, we can actually move forward. And really, we can build another set of awareness to, like you said, mm -hmm. make people open their eyes. And the good thing about what I like about the Guardian Angels is that we're able to stir enough shit that it makes people pay attention again. Yeah. So that I like. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, I, I, I think it's been, it was two or three, maybe four videos that were on the news that I saw for oh. this case specifically that yeah. I've, I've seen you guys. So mm -hmm. when Russell told me to come here, it wasn't like, you know, why am I coming here? I knew exactly oh, yeah. your guys' yeah. involvement because I'd seen it on the news clips. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah.
So, all right, I'm gonna turn this off and we'll yeah, 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 and I'll play uh, you guys some. Okay, if you want to hear some. This was yeah. this that was great though. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Russell. You sure you want to hear this shit? Yeah.